Hi everyone. In this video, I'm going to show you how to make a realistic round brilliant gemstone model like the one you're seeing here in Rhino. If you just want a round brilliant gemstone model, but you don't really want to go through the modeling process, I offer a free round brilliant gem model over at CG Trader. I also have a free version of the jewelry kit that I make for Rhino, and that allows you to import gems into Rhino with a press of a button. Plus, it has several other tools that are useful for designing jewelry in Rhino. I'll leave links to those in the description below the video, but if you really want to know how to model a realistic round brilliant, keep watching. We'll start off by creating a new file, and we'll use the Small Objects Millimeters template. I want to begin working in the top viewport, so we'll go ahead and expand that by double clicking on this tab right here. And then I'll zoom in quite a bit here. Make sure that you have your snaps set up like me. And make sure you have project turned on. And let's go ahead and activate grid snaps for right now. And then we'll grab the point tool and put a point right here in the center of the world. And we'll put another point five units out from that right here and then we'll turn grid snaps off. Next, we'll go to the Curve Tools tab and grab the Line tool and snap a line from this point to that point. And then we'll go to the Transform tab and grab the Rotate tool and select the line, and our center of rotation will be this point, and our angle will be 22.5 degrees. Then we'll select the line again, and mirror it across the x-axis. Then we'll select both lines and divide them into four sections and then delete the lines. Then we'll grab the polygon tool and set the number of sides to 8. And then we'll set the mode to circumscribed and we'll snap the center of the polygon here and the edge of the polygon here. And this will end up being our table facet. And then we'll grab the polyline tool and we'll snap here, 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 and back at the beginning. And this will be our pavilion main facet shape. We'll grab the polyline tool again and snap here, 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 and back at the beginning. And this will be our kite facet shape. We will want to keep these three points, but we don't need the rest of them, so we'll select them and delete them. Let's go ahead and double click on this tab here to go back to having four views, and then click on Set View, and then right click on the Zoom Extents command, and that will just zoom in on all of the objects in all of the viewports. I've switched to four viewports because it will be easier to select things in the top viewport but we'll need to perform our actions in the front viewport. Now we want to select the pavilion main shape, go to the transform tab and grab the shear tool. And it's very important that we perform the shear operation in the front viewport for this project. So we'll set the origin of the shear right here and we'll set the reference of the shear right here. And then we'll type in the shear angle, which is going to be the pavilion angle which is 40.6 degrees. And then we'll select the kite shape and grab the shear tool again. And remember, it's very important that we do this in the front viewport. And we'll set the origin point for the shear right here and the reference point for the shear right here. And then we'll need to type in the shear angle, which in this case is going to be the crown angle. But because it's going to be rotating clockwise, we'll need to type in a negative value. So type in negative 34. Now we'll go back into the perspective viewport and we'll turn off project and we'll grab the table facet shape and then grab the move command and we'll move the table from here to here. Next we want to create the star facet and we'll do that by grabbing the polyline tool and snapping in a triangle to these three points right here. We'll grab the polyline tool again and snap to these three points to make another little triangle and this is going to be the upper girdle facet. And then we'll snap another triangle to these three points 
and that's going to be the lower girdle facet. Next, I want to select all of the shapes, but I don't want to select the points. Selecting right to left will allow me to select whatever the selection box touches. So I'll select the bottom two shapes by selecting right to left. And then while holding down shift and selecting right to left, I'll also select all of the upper shapes. And that way I will avoid selecting the points. Now we'll go to the surface tools tab and click on this tool right here, which is the surface from planar curves tool. And that will fill in all of these shapes with planar surfaces. The curves are still selected and we no longer need them. So go ahead and press delete to delete those curves. You'll be able to see the surfaces better if we go into shaded view. The upper girdle facet and the lower girdle facet are a little bit too short. So we'll use the extend surface command to extend both of them by 0.5 millimeters. Next, we'll select these two facets and mirror them across the X axis. Selecting from right to left, we'll get these facets right here and then we'll select these facets at the bottom and then we'll polar array these around the center of the world eight times. Then we'll select everything and join it all together. This will give us the crown facets and the pavilion facets. Next, we're going to go to the top viewport and if you need to, you can adjust or zoom out. And then be sure you turn project back on and then grab the polygon tool and set the number of sides to 64. Now I should say here that if you want a smooth girdle, use a circle instead of the polygon. And for faceted girdles, you can use a polygon and set the number of sides to 32, 48, 64, like we're doing here, 80 or 96, which by the way, those are all multiples of 16. We'll set the center of the polygon here at the center of the gym, and we'll set the outer edge of the polygon here at the bottom point of the kite facet. If we select very carefully from right to left, we can select all of the facets in the gym like this. Now we're going to click on the split tool and then select the polygon as our cutting object. After we hit enter, it will split the facets and trim them with the polygon. While everything is still selected, we want to carefully deselect the parts that we want to keep. So we're going to hold down control and click twice in the middle to remove those parts from the selection. And then we'll press delete to delete all of the outer edges, which we don't need. Now we'll go back to the perspective view and raise the crown up by 0.3 millimeters, which is the thickness of the girdle. Then we'll grab the polygon and we'll raise it up by half that amount or 0.15. Now we'll go to the surface tools tab and grab the extrude tool and look up in the command line and make sure that both sides is set to yes. And then extrude the polygon so that it goes a little past the girdle on both sides. And then press delete to delete the polygon. Then we'll select these facets and split them by the crown and the pavilion. And then we'll delete the parts that we don't need. Then we can select everything and join them together. And finally, we can remove these three points here. All right, well, we're done with our round brilliant gemstone, but keep in mind that you can always turn your round brilliant into an oval gemstone simply by stretching it in one direction like this. And now you have an oval. I'll just go ahead and undo that. All right. And that's it for this video. Thank you everyone for watching. And I hope to see all of you in future videos.